welcome back it's your girl tay and i'm doing an instacart video i know i know i'm in my home it's kind of weird but there ain't no rule that says you got to be sitting in your car just to talk about instacart so i'm getting ready to make me some dish water i gotta wash these dishes and then i'm a multitask and sit my behind down on the couch over there and tell y'all what's going on first things first you guys definitely make sure you smash that like button as always, share, comment down below. I'm open to hearing any new experiences or answering any questions that I can within my level of experience. And also, definitely, if you want to join the tribe, all you got to do is subscribe. So, first things first, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I'm going to plop it on the screen somewhere, but I literally just received an email and a message via the Instacart dashboard stating that they are bringing instant cash out to the U.S., they have been testing this out in different regions and different markets, obviously not in the United States or maybe in certain states, um, certain areas of the United States. And now I think they've decided to just go ahead and just bring it to all of the states. So um, for those of you who are already doing Instacart, you should have received this email. You should be able to go into your Instacart platform, go into your earnings. And now when you go down under the earnings tab, Instead of saying direct deposit, it's going to say payment method. Then when you open up that tab, it's going to go to another page where it's going to say direct deposit or instant cash out. And you can put your banking information, your accounting number, I mean your accounting, your account number, your routing number, and then you can add a debit card for instant cash out. The fee is 50 cent, which is actually wonderful. So just think on those days where Instacart is popping and you end up making $150, you can cash out immediately. So I'm actually pretty excited about that because um, I had actually recorded a video earlier um, while I was driving talking about the fact that um, with Instacart, they don't have instant payout. So I deleted that and decided to just do my video all over again and tell you guys that now they are doing instant payout for Instacart now. So. If you haven't already signed up for Instacart and you're seriously considering signing up for Instacart, um, definitely use my referral link down below. You'll receive some extra compensation. I'll receive extra compensation for you signing up using my link. Um, and then once you're in and you, you've gotten started, be sure to share your referral link that you'll receive as well with other people who you want to share the platform with. I definitely think that Instacart is a um, perfect opportunity for stay-at-home parents, moms, dads, aunts, whoever, legal guardians, people who really need the flexibility of being able to schedule their own timing, um, not, don't have to worry about providing documentation when you decide that you don't want to go to work um, for whatever the reason may be. So... I wanted to kind of go over a little bit of the sign-up process. I'm waiting for this water to fill up so I can sit down. Okay, I think that's good. So anyways, the sign-up process. I love my finger. The sign-up process for Instacart is very simple. It's very similar to filling out any type of application for a regular W-2 um, tax withholding job. You just simply go to the website by typing in instacart.com and you can go down where it says, do you want to get paid to be a shopper or to become an Instacart shopper and then follow the prompts. Or like I suggested a few seconds ago, use my referral link because you don't want to miss out on the opportunity to make um whatever it is that you're going to make. I know it's different from region to region. I know for me, I'm in Orange County, California. It's only $50. I've seen that in some places, um, the uh, referral bonus is significantly higher. I was researching it. I've seen some people getting gotten $500 or $750. I guess it depends on how busy it is in that area and um, uh how few or how many drivers they may have in that region place. So in terms of the referral bonus, I'm not going to give you guys a specific number because even if you use my referral link, um, what you may receive may be different than those who sign up under me in Orange County. So if you're in Illinois or if you're in Detroit or if you're in um Washington, the referral bonus is going to be different. So just definitely um, take that into consideration when you do use a referral link. Another thing is, is that you cannot use the referral link retroactively, meaning you can't sign up and then go back and try to put the link in. You have to use it right when you're signing up for Instacart. So definitely take advantage. I myself didn't know much about Instacart or any of the other platforms that I've signed up with. So I didn't use anybody's referral link and I'm kind of upset about that with me being... Um, 
as diligent in researching things before I just jump in head first. I could have used someone's referral link and couldn't have could have gotten myself extra compensation, even if it was just an extra $50, extra $100 or whatever. You get that in addition to whatever your earnings are. So once you sign up, um, once you get to the website and you use a referral link or don't use a referral link, it's going to take you to a page where basically you're going to put your personal information, your name, your birthday, your gender, your address, um, it's going to ask you uh, to sign some privacy policy notices. It's going to ask you to consent to a background check. Background checks are done by a company called Checker. And once your background check is in progress, you'll be able to go on the actual Checker website. And I'm going to post the name of that company on the screen somewhere too so that you can see the spelling of it. Um, you can actually go to that website and you can actually monitor the progress of your background check. Background checks usually take from... I'll say one to five days, but it could take longer. It depends on um, what you may or may not have on your report. So if you don't have anything on your report um, and everything comes back fairly quickly, be mindful that, um, because I went through this process and on some of my reports, they came back really, really fast. And then on some of them, I mean like 24 hours fast. And on some of them, I had to wait like a week or two. And I'm like, what's going on? The information on my report hasn't changed. So it really just depends. Sometimes the court systems are updating their information. And so when they're doing that or maintenance or whatever, it takes longer for them to report the information to Checker. So just be mindful of that. You guys have a little bit of patient um, patience. Um, Instacart will not let you start working with their um, platform if you do not have a cleared background check. Now, I can't give you specifics of whether or not certain aspects of your background check could affect your ability. I'm pretty sure that there are some things using common sense, like if you're a rob, if you've been into jail for petty theft or grand theft or anything that has to do with stealing, I'm pretty sure they're going to look at that and go, no deal. That's a red flag. We don't want this person working on our platform because we don't know if this person is going to get these groceries and take off. And I think that's a fair assessment to make. However, I can't say anything for something like a person who smokes marijuana. I really don't know. I don't have any of those issues, so I can't speak about that. Um, I don't think that Checker will be able to give you very much information on that. So it really just depends on what Instacart feels they want to deal with and what they're not willing to accept. So it's just going to be a waiting game with them. Um, like I said, sometimes your reports come back rather quickly, so you end up not waiting much time at all. But as soon as you sign up, you also have the opportunity to... Um, get those bags that I showed you guys in the last video. I uploaded a clip of me loading in some bags. Those green bags are from Instacart. Now I've seen, and actually someone commented on my video and said that she wouldn't recommend you purchasing those bags. Honestly, I didn't mean to purchase those bags because I had saw that before. People were saying they're really, really cheap and um, you can find better quality insulated bags. I believe that Instacart wants you to show proof that you have bags. Um, so if you have bags, I believe they want you to like take a picture of it and then show them that you have insulated bags. It's just mainly about food safety and keeping the items at um, the temperature that they need to be at while you're traveling. So if you have dairy products, you want to use those bags for that. If you have meat, you want to use those bags for that. Keep your meat at a, um, at a good temperature while you're traveling to the customer's house. So you have the option of getting the, the bags from Instacart. I think the company is Bamco and it comes out of your earnings. It's $27.99 here where I I am again I don't know if that's just a general price whether you're in California or whether you're in another state but where I'm at it's $27.99 for those bags you receive four so you do have the option like I said to go to Amazon um, and research and find your own bags I'm going to see if I can copy and paste that link from my other video um, where the suggestion came for some better bags and also a collapsible wagon. See if I can put that in the description box. So check the description box for um, those links if I was able to um, copy and paste it. Another thing is, let me see what else is there, customer ratings. Now this morning I had a 5.0 customer rating. I had only had six ratings, even though I have did more done more deliveries than that, only six customers um, rated me. So you have, they have one to three days to change the tip amount in the app. And they also have one to three days to rate you in the app. So, um, here's what I'm going to say about that. 
they want you to have a high customer rating. And I don't really think it's difficult to achieve that. All you need to do literally is be on time, use your best judgment. I cannot express this enough. It doesn't really take a whole lot of quick thinking on your feet, not the way people try to make it seem. It's not like you're in an operation room, you're a doctor and you have to figure out whether you wanna utilize this tool for this part of the body. No, it's none of that. It's simply, if a person is saying, I want organic blueberries and they are, if they haven't given you any notes in the app that says, um, don't replace it or replace it if they haven't told you anything and it's saying use your best judgment then do that use your best judgment get some blueberries i know for me call them you have the option to call or send a text you can click the same way you would when you're using your phone for your regular personal phone calls you can click on the icon badge that has a picture of a telephone and uh, the message um, the message uh, icon and send them a text message. Take a picture of what you're about to pick up. Say, these are the only blueberries that they have. They don't have organic blueberries. These are the only ones that they have. Is this okay? Either they're going to respond or they're not. If they do not respond by the time that you're done completing your, um, uh, your shopping uh, and you've called them and you've basically exhausted all of your resources and trying to contact them, then I would say um, either purchase the, you, you have one or two choices. Purchase the blueberries on the chance that they're not going to like the blueberries or refund the item. I don't think that no customer is going to be upset if you refund the item. So I think most likely the safest thing would be to just give them their money back for the item that wasn't in stock. Okay, but you have the option to contact the customer. So don't make it difficult more difficult than it has to be. It's really not that difficult to work Instacart. It's just the same. If you know how to grocery shop for yourself, I'm a mom, I have six kids. I go to the grocery store on a regular basis. Go to the grocery store and shop for these people. It, it, to me, it's a little bit easier because they have actual grocery lists. And the only thing that can make that a little bit difficult is if you're shopping in a store that you've never, ever been in before and it's okay to ask for help sometimes. Say, hey, you know what? I don't know where this pasta is. Can you point me in the right direction? And then move on. Get all of the items that you can find easily out of the way first, like your produce and all that. I tend to get that stuff out of the way first because it takes the most time. I have to actually go through and look for bruising and molding and, you know, bad dark spots and things like that. And then I move on to the stuff where I know tend to be all in the same area, no matter which store you go to. If I need to get dairy, I know where to go for, for the dairy items. So use your best judgment when you're shopping. It's really not that difficult to be an Instacart shopper. Um, customer rating is significant. It's very easy. However, there are going to be some things that happen that are outside of your control. You're going to make some mistakes and it's okay. As long as you're doing the very best and providing customer service, I don't think that you'll have any issues. Like I said this morning, I had a 5.0 customer rating. However, when I checked back um, not too long ago, I had a 4.88. So I'm a little bit disappointed. I don't know who could have given me, but they gave me a four star. So it still wasn't bad. So six customers gave me five stars and one customer gave me a four star. So that's still pretty good for me. So you want to try to just set a goal for yourself and keep your rating as high as you can. Now, again, with you doing everything that you could, you're still going to come across some customers that are just going to have a negative disposition and there's really not a whole lot that you can do about that. You can't change their mind. You can't make them like you. You can't bribe them. You just kind of have to just let it be what it is. Um, don't get too wrapped up in how a person may be feeling. If you've done your absolute best, you smile, you've said, have a great day. You didn't bruise or damage their items. There's really nothing that you can do. Some people are going to lie because they're trying to juke the system anyway, get things for free. There's nothing that you could do about that. Just do the very best that you can and move on. So I think that's pretty much it in terms of Instacart. Um, that I wanted to speak on. The sign-up process is very easy. Um, like I said, it's just a matter of you going in and entering your information and then waiting. Oh, in terms of downloading the app for Instacart, when I started, the app for Instacart wasn't on Play Store. I have an Android phone. So when I went to Play Store, the shopper app wasn't in um, the Play Store. I had to wait for them to send me an email with the link where I can download the app. I don't know if it's the same right now, but you will receive all that information via email where they'll let you know we're going to send you a link. Please keep an eye out in your for your emails. Check your spam folders we're going to send you the link to download the instacart app once all of your documentation comes back as approved i know that they do a driving record and that 
almost always comes up fairly quickly like with that sometimes comes up like within an hour as soon as you submit your consent for the background check the um, driving record comes up immediately um, what else alcohol delivery I just wanted to touch on this just a little bit because I believe in safety and I don't believe in giving alcohol to minors one thing I know for sure you cannot do is leave alcohol at the door. So if you have a customer that's saying, please leave my groceries at the door, even if they have just one can of beer, you need to politely send them a message and say, hey, because you have alcohol in your order, I'm not able to leave your groceries at the door. Someone needs to come to the door with an ID who is 21, age, 21 years of age and older. I had that happen to me with a customer who had two cans of beer and she wanted me to leave her groceries right outside her front door. And I told her, I sent her a message just like that saying, excuse me, because you have alcohol in your order, you're gonna have to come to the door and provide your ID or someone who's over the age of 21 um, needs to provide a valid ID or driver's license so that I can scan it into the app to make sure that I'm doing my due diligence and verifying that I did not leave alcohol with a minor. So um, she was really cool about it, but I wanted to do that before I actually left the parking lot of the store because um, they won't let you keep the alcohol. If you have alcohol in that order, you're going to have to return it back to the store. And so to avoid me going back and forth and wasting my gas, I let her know that then. So just in case if she wasn't home and if she wasn't going to be there when I arrived for her delivery, then I could just go ahead and return these items and then she can just replace her, do her order again at another time. Um, it didn't work out that way. She ended up being very cooperative and just handed me her ID and all that and gave me a five star rating. So um, just to let you guys know when it comes to alcohol, I do not believe, but don't quote me on this. I'm going to find out for sure. But I do not believe that when you're delivering alcohol, the person who actually made the order has to be the one to accept it. I think that as long as a person has a valid ID, um, and they're 21 years of age and older, you scan the back of their driver's license, the barcode on the back, their information is automatically uploaded into the app on your phone or the tablet. You click next, and then you have them sign their name on your app, and then you click next again, you click save, and then it's gonna take you to another page where it says complete delivery. You hit complete delivery, and then it's gonna say done, go back to dashboard, and you're done. It's as simple as that, it's not difficult at all. What I've noticed too with alcohol, when you go to the store and you purchase it, sometimes the cashiers will ask you for your ID. You know, they have that rule now. If you look above a certain age, they won't card you. Um, and then sometimes they'll just ask to see your phone because on your phone, it will have the actual birth date of the person who placed the order. So you can show them that and your ID or one of the other. It just depends on, on the store itself. Which brings me to my last and final point. I know I'm like uploading you, giving you guys so much information, but I wanted to give you as much as I can. So my last final point is every store process for checking out with Instacart is different. Now I can only speak on the stores that I have done my Instacart shopping at. So far it's been El Super, um, Food for Less, and State of Brothers. State of Brothers, it was just delivery only. I don't really think I need to go into that. Delivery only just basically means that they have in-store shoppers that go and shop the order and then they put all of the bags in a specific area. You just basically go scan the bags and then you deliver it. I mean, you get less. I think it's $5 minimum for those, but usually those are um, stacked. So you may get three or five delivery only orders. Um, so it may end up being $15, but you have three different customers and they're generally all in the same area. So it's not like you're gonna drive five miles to the north and then 20 miles to the south they're all going to be in the same area so that's delivery only um very simple i actually like those better because you don't have to do the work you just have to go to the staging area scan the bags and you're good to go um but yeah with el super once you're done and you click that you're done and you're ready to go to check out in your app it's going to pull up a page with a barcode. Now, the El Super that I've been shopping at, they don't have scanners. So they just tap in the code that's on the screen. And then on their actual register screen, it will say Instacart. And then they can start scanning the items. They have to do that before they start scanning the items for that order, not after, before. It's letting the system know that this is going to be processed as an Instacart shop. Now, that's for El Super. However, when I went to Food for Less, they have like... Um, Two separate membership, no, two separate codes. I think one is a membership card for the actual Food for Less store, and I think the other one is similar to the code that's used at El Super. It's a code that lets the system know that this is an Instacart um, 
order. They usually know because the first time I went to Food for Less and did a shop, um, I gave him the phone and he scanned the first card or barcode or whatever and then he started scanning and, and again this one too has to be done before they start scanning the items in the order not after so make sure you're at the front because sometimes you know cashiers are not really paying attention I know because I've been one and they're just trying to get people out of their line so they don't know if you're an Instacart shopper or not so you want to make sure that you show them your phone or your tablet or whatever so that they put those codes in before they actually start scanning the items so yeah um the cashiers would generally know um, what they need to do with these codes and sometimes you may have to explain the first time I did this at food for less He seemed a little bit hesitant. He did the first barcode scan the items and then he did the second barcode after The second time I went to food for less to do the order This one seemed like she was a bit more experienced with it And she just scanned both barcodes before she started scanning the items in the order So it really just depends but like I've been saying it's very very simple easy breezy Cover girl, I love that saying. But anyways, it's a, <laughs> it's a very, very, very simple um, uh, uh, platform for you to use. Everything is pretty much written out for you in the app. The customer nine times out of 10 will tell you what they want you to do. Sometimes they'll tell you if they don't have this item, exchange it for this one. Or sometimes they'll say if they don't have this item, don't replace it at all, mm -hmm. just move on. So I'm recording. Yes. Oh, shit. Okay, language. Shoot. Okay, anyways. All right, sorry about that rude interruption. My son's father is being a uh, um, greedy Gus, asking me to cook like as if I'm his own personal ancient mama. But anyways, so I'm going to end this video on that note. Hopefully that information was um, helpful to you guys in any way. I'm going to continue to do Instacart videos and give you information as it comes up for me. Anything that I feel is significant um, that will help you guys to become inst successful Instacart shoppers, I'm definitely going to share with you. Keep in mind, I'm going to keep saying this until my level of experience changes. I am a brand new Instacart shopper. I have not been doing this for months, 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 months. I've only got like nine to 10 deliveries under my belt. So when I'm talking to you guys about what's going on, I'm talking to you guys from my level of experience, not from the level of a person who's been shopping for six months to a year or even longer than that. So I just want to let you guys know that because sometimes some people don't tell you that and they come on here and they give you wrong information. I'm telling you um, being upfront and, and very, very um, black and white with you guys. If I don't, if I'm not sure about the answer, I'm going to say, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I'm going to try to find out for you. If I do know for sure, I'm going to say that. And if this is just my own experience and this is just my own experience, every marketplace and region is different. Some places are busier than others. You know, it just, it's, it's, um, you're working for yourself. You kind of have to take the good days along with the bad days. Know that every day is not going to be the same, but you're going to have some really fast fabulous opportunities and experiences. I met somebody who's a YouTuber who may actually want to do Instacart. It's an opportunity for me to collab and actually learn from that person. So just always keep an open mind when you're doing a job like this and uh, definitely smash that like button, you guys. Share with your friends, your family, whoever. Comment down below. As always, I'm open to questions that can be answered and your experiences and any advice that you can offer me. And uh, yeah, if you want to join our live here, all you gotta do is click subscribe. But on that note, I'm gonna give you guys farewell until the next video. And uh, yeah, peace.